Today we're going to show you how to give some elite oral hygiene instructions using evidence-based behavior change techniques. Welcome back guys. If you're new here, my name is Zo. I'm a foundation dentist working here in London. And my name is Ali and I'm a final year dental student studying at Newcastle. One of the first treatments you'll ever do as a student is given OHI and you'll do this countless times in your first clinical year alone. So that's only more reason to be doing it properly from day one. I think it's really important not to lose sight of the impact of teaching good prevention to your patients. And this is something that definitely shouldn't be done quickly or be squeezed in. I'm prouder of the fact that I have a patient who reduced their plaque score by 85% than I am of most of my direct restorations. And that's honestly because if you think about it, I saved this person from a deteriorating oral health status, which would have led to perio, bone loss, and eventually no teeth. So in this video, we'll be taking you through our five-step technique on how to give good oral hygiene instructions and our timestamps below for each of the five steps. Let's get started. Step one is to gather information. Before you start to teach the patient on how to look after their oral health, you need to establish how much they already know. As mentioned in our video on how to take a history, we like to include asking the patient about their oral health regime in the past dental history section, where we'd find out the type of brush they use, the type of toothpaste they use, when and how often they brush and for how long, and finally, if they use any interdental cleaning aids. The second step involves further investigating the state of their oral health by assessing how much plaque they have on the surfaces of their teeth. There are different ways of doing this, and one example is by using a Tureski plaque scoring index, which is the one we used at Bristol. At Newcastle, we use a plaque disclosing tablet for patients above a certain age and record the percentage of surfaces with heavy plaque deposits. This gives you an idea of the status of the patient's oral health and tells you which areas the patient's missing when they brush, and you can use this information to tailor your advice. The plaque score can be used as a guide to judge how much the patient's improved since the last time you saw them and gives you a huge opportunity to give positive reinforcement and encourage behavior change. Before we mention step three, I really want to talk about how to drive your patient to change their behavior in the most scientifically effective way. It's a common misconception that the most effective way to motivate a patient is by scaring them with the consequences of neglecting the change that they're trying to drive. So for example, if my patient had periodontitis and you wanted them to improve their oral health, one approach would be to tell them if they continue to neglect brushing their teeth, they'll lose all their teeth and potentially live a miserable life. Well, the problem with that approach is that the brain doesn't react as well to negative information as it does to positive information. And negative information and fear usually induces inaction and wherever there is an impact, it's usually limited and temporary, while positive information tends to induce action towards the change in behavior that you're trying to drive. The logic behind this is that because positive information makes you feel good, you chase it. And because negative information makes you feel bad, you avoid it. The most scientifically effective approach to inducing behavior change for a longer period of time is split into three categories that the brain craves and react positively to. So the first is social incentive, and that's the response to other people's opinions of you, and is usually demonstrated by copying and wanting to be better than other people. The second thing that drives a person to change their behavior is an immediate reward, and that's because we value something which we're sure we'll get now over something that we may or may not get in the future. If you reward your patient for something they've done now, they're more likely to conform to the positive action and this effect can last up to six months and usually is enough time for your patient to form a habit. And the third thing which can drive change is progress monitoring. And this is because the average brain is better at coding positive information about the future than it is at coding negative information about the future. And a plaque score can integrate all three of these. It can act as a social incentive since the patient won't want to disappoint or feel judged by the dentist the next time they come in and get a plaque score. It's the same reason people heavily brush their teeth just before they go in to see the dentist. Secondly, it can provide immediate reward when the patient improves their score or reaches their target score and when they receive positive reinforcement from the dentist. And lastly, it allows you and the patient to monitor the progress since it's quantifiable and you can set targets for the patient. Having said all this, that doesn't mean we shouldn't communicate the risks of neglecting their oral hygiene. It just means that we should be smart about the way that we deliver this information to the patient so that we can encourage a change in behavior. So step three is delivering the relevant information to the patient. Let's say you have a patient who brushes their teeth once in the morning for two minutes with a non-fluoridated toothpaste. The OHI I would give would sound something like this. If you don't brush your teeth, plaque will build up where the gum meets the tooth and the plaque is that sticky stuff that you can scrape off with your fingernail and there's a lot of bacteria in there. This bacteria irrigates the gums and causes them to become red and swollen and this is what causes gum disease. Gum disease breaks down the bone which holds the teeth in place and eventually if enough bone breaks down, the teeth become wobbly and make it hard for you to eat and talk. 
This bacteria can also use sugar to make acid and can cause tooth decay. Now the way to stop this plaque from building up is by brushing for two minutes every day, which I know you've told me you do already, so well done and keep that up. Now let's see if we can improve that plaque score, which we talked about before, by brushing before you sleep as well. I know you've told me that you've been using toothpaste without fluoride inside and a really simple swap that would improve the strength of your teeth a lot and protect them from decay is using a toothpaste with 1450 parts per million fluoride which can be found on the back of the tube. And also I'm not sure if you've been doing this or not but a lot of people don't know that you should spit the toothpaste out after you brush but not rinse with water after so that the fluoride can stay on the tooth for longer. And finally you should also swap out your toothbrush every two to three months. Now looking at your plaque score percentage it's actually pretty good but I think we can reduce it if we show you on the model how you could remove this plaque more effectively. Then I would demonstrate the modified bass technique to make sure that they're brushing the outer surface, the inner surface and the biting surface in a systematic order towards where the gum and the teeth meet. So the order that I like to use is to divide the mouth into four quadrants. So I tell the patient you should be brushing each quadrant for 30 seconds. If they have an electric toothbrush that's quite convenient because they have 30 second timers and if they don't I just tell them to have a timer on their phone. Every 30 seconds they should be brushing one quadrant again making sure that they're brushing all the surfaces. So they start with one quadrant, after 30 seconds they move on to the next, then the next, then the next. It doesn't really matter which quadrant they start as long as they make sure they do each and every single quadrant. Step four is to get them to practice what you've just taught them. You should ask them to get in front of a sink and a mirror as they would at home and ask them to show you if they are able to do what you've just taught them. You want to make sure they're going in a systematic order brushing all the surfaces and if they're using a good brushing technique for their toothbrush type, their age and their dexterity. If they aren't then you should stop and correct them until they can do it. If they're a capable adult using a manual toothbrush I would want them to be brushing with a vibrating motion covering one or two teeth at a time. If they're using an electric toothbrush which if they're not I would recommend I would want them to keep the round head still at a 45 degree angle towards towards the pocket of one tooth at a time for about two seconds and then move on to the next tooth, working their way around all the surfaces. If it's a child or someone who lacks the ability to brush with a proper technique, I'd be okay with them using the scrubbing technique where they just go back and forth, but I'd still teach them to go in a systematic order so that they're covering all the surfaces. I'd also advise someone who supervises their brushing to redo it for them to a higher standard. For children who are under 10, I would involve the parent and explain that they're not able to do a detailed enough job. So finally, step five involves helping the patient make plaque removal a habit and supporting the improvement of their oral health over a longer period of time. Now this involves constant positive reinforcement and progress monitoring with plaque scores. Making a plan on when is a good time to fit this in the day and tailoring the advice you give to your patient has proven to increase compliance. It's important to ask your patient on returning visits about how well they've been sticking to the plan and eventually when it's appropriate you can start to include incidental cleaning aids to the oral hygiene regime. I've definitely made that mistake of trying to make my patient do too much too soon. They would present saying that they brush their teeth once every few days and I'll be telling them about flossing and using teepees and they'll be thinking this guy's just so extra. I'm not bothered to do any of that. So you just need to be smart about how much information you give them in one session. Finally, when you give OHI, especially to younger patients, make sure you consult the DBOH for specific age-related advice like prescribing mouthwash once a day at a different time to brushing from eight years old if necessary, or like prescribing 2,800 parts per million fluoride to a patient who's over 10, or 5,000 parts per million fluoride to a patient who's over 16. It's also important to know that flossing and interdental brushes should be used once a day before brushing. So just to recap all the five steps for you guys. Step one is gathering all the information. Step two is plaque score and behavior change. Step three is educating the patient. Step four is practice and step five is maintenance. Okay guys so that's pretty much it on giving OHI and we hope you guys found it useful. If you did we'd really appreciate it if you gave us a like and subscribe. You might also enjoy some of the other videos that we have on the channel so feel free to check out some of the suggestions here. And also if you guys noticed anything that we might have missed out just throw that in the comments below and we can all learn together. See you guys in the next video. Peace.